All right, guys, I'm here again. I figured I haven't been back for a while. I just wanted to give you guys a new video since I probably won't review anything this week. So I'm um, here with my top 10 favorite movies of all time. On my list, I'll probably have a lot of movies by the same director. Um, I try to get different genres in there, but it's just my favorite movies, the ones I watch a lot, a lot of replay value for me. So I hope you enjoy. My 10th favorite movie is The Shawshank Redemption, starring Morgan Freeman and Tim Roth. Um, I heard a lot of good things about this movie, actually, over time. A lot of people have it in their top 10, top 5 favorite movies or best movies of all time. And I just recently saw the movie, actually. And I'll say I'm pretty surprised at how good it was. Usually, you know, stories that are very slow don't work for me, but this one did for me. I just like ex experience of how it showed just 20 years or whatever it was in jail and just how he coped with it. How he, you know, first wasn't accepted by the prisoners, but over time became friends and just that relationship between the other prisoners and with the warden, I believe he was. It's just a great movie. You have to see it. I actually recently just made it into my top 10s because I just saw it as well. So it probably would have been a little bit higher had I seen it earlier, but that's what it is. My ninth favorite movie is Pulp Fiction by Quentin Tarantino starring Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta. Now this movie is not your typical movie to me. It's a lot of different scenes, a lot of different locations that the film takes place. It doesn't really follow the, the three-act system that most films follow, but I really enjoyed it. I liked how the direction of it and just how Samuel Jackson and John Travolta had a lot of good chemistry. You would notice that um, like the camera would be far away, but they would be talking, but you could still see them. And a lot of their conversations were really just natural conversations that didn't feel forced. And I really enjoyed that about the movie. I'm still trying to figure out what is inside that briefcase. But it's still a great movie. My favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. And um, it's just a lot of replay value from the action to the f scenes, the Royale with cheese. You know, that's just, it's just good. My eighth favorite movie is Inception by Christopher Nolan starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hardy, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I saw this movie when I was on vacation in Florida. And uh, I was pretty surprised. I really enjoyed the movie. The dynamics of the special effects, it didn't look fake. It actually blended in with the environment. It was within the world and that it wasn't forced and it wasn't fake and it wasn't obvious. I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I watched the movie about two or three times since I saw it in theaters. And every time I get a totally different perspective of the movie. In the end of the movie, it was just, it was just great to me. The top of the spin. At first, you know, I had one perspective, then I had another after I rewatched the movie. So it's just a lot of replay value. A lot of great scenes with the dreams within the dreams within the dreams. There's about four dreams going on within each other. And I just like that about the movie. It wasn't really a typical action thriller. You had to really focus, you had to really understand what was going on. And that's what I enjoyed about the movie. My seventh favorite movie is A Bronx Tale, directed by Robert De Niro. And what I like about this movie is like a coming of age. There's this boy who happens to see this murder occur in front of him, and he doesn't rat out on the guy. And over time, as he gets older, he builds a relationship with him, with the guy. He looked at the guy as a father figure, and I, I really liked that about the movie. Um, now, what I liked about the movie is that it showed a relationship between the kid and the guy that he did not rat on. It shows us how they develop and how the guy that he didn't rat on helped him up with his life and his life experiences, really. From uh, girl issues to things with his father just he looked at the guy as a father figure really even though he already had a father I think it's very relatable that's what I liked about it I think the directing was great as well and um, just a good story great dialogue it felt very natural it didn't feel like I was watching a movie it felt like I was watching this kid's life that's what I really enjoyed about the movie sixth favorite movie is Slumdog Millionaire I actually found out about this movie while I was watching the Oscars in 2008 and with the movie it just it just really hit a chord with me this guy is on the Indian version of who wants to be a millionaire and um, he pretty much knows all the answers but the way he knows the answers is through his life experiences. So when there's a question that occurs on the show, it's a flashback which shows what was going on in his life at that point in time. And it's just a really heartfelt story. Um, he went through a lot of things in his life, good and bad, with his siblings and random people when you could tell that the things made him who he was. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire show just brought back all these events, whether they were 
good or bad in his life that he had to remember. And in the end, he just finds himself. And I really enjoyed that. My fifth favorite movie is Scarface. Now, I know the acting is over the top. I know that Al Pacino has a horrible, horrible accent. And I know the violence is a little bit over the top too, but I really enjoyed the movie for what it was. Um, There's a lot of lines in there, a lot of quotables. I pretty much remember every line in the movie. Every line. That's saying something about a movie. It's just very catchy. It's kind of like a song in a catchy sense, but it's still enjoyable. There's a lot of memorable scenes. Everybody likes to talk about the ending. The scene with the bathtub in the beginning, I really enjoyed that scene. The scene at the diner table, I really enjoyed. It's just a great movie. It's not Al Pacino's best. He's one of my favorite actors of all time, actually. It's not his best work, but I just enjoy the movie. It's, just, it's a guilty pleasure. That's really what it is. My fourth favorite movie is The Dark Knight. Now, I could have picked any movie from the trilogy, whether it's Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, or The Dark Knight Rises. I could have considered it all one, but I picked The Dark Knight. Why? Because of the Joker. I'm a fan of the Joker. And he was done well in this movie. There hasn't been a Joker on scene since Jack Nicholas did his thing in 1989. But this one was very dark. It wasn't as funny. It's more serious. It fit the theme of the whole Dark Knight trilogy for me. The Joker was very funny, but it wasn't in a in a haha -ha sense. It was more of sarcastic and very it wasn't light. I'll put it to you that way. I like the performances. Christian Bale did really well as Batman as well as usual. Heath Ledger took over the movie. From the beginning to the bank heist to the hospital scene to the end with the dogs and this whole setup of how to get Batman to expose himself. That's what the whole movie is really about and I like that. To me it's like a crime drama. It's not really a superhero movie. It's like a crime drama if that makes any sense. But I really enjoyed it. My third favorite movie is Goodfellas. Now, I'm a big fan of mafia movies, or gangster movies in that sense. I don't know why, but I just am. I think they're really good. And this one, ooh, if it wasn't for what was number one on my list, this would definitely be number one. It's directed by Martin Scorsese, and it stars Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci. This is Ray Liotta's first big break into Hollywood, and uh, man, did he take it. He took the opportunity and ran with it. This movie from beginning to end, it just had me involved. The narration was well. There was kind of a similar narration to Shawshank Redemption, but from the perspective of the gangster or the kid who grows up to be the gangster and is with these wise guys. That's what I really enjoyed about the movie. Um, it just shows their everyday life. When you show him from beginning to end, at the end where he's very paranoid about being attacked by the other people that he was involved with because everybody's getting hit. I just liked the story. It just showed the mafia life. It didn't glorify it for me. It showed the ins and outs, the positives and negatives of that lifestyle. How you're living in paranoia every day, but you're still doing it because of the thrills. I really enjoyed that. The directing was great by Martin Scorsese. The beginning scene where it's a one-shot take where you go through the restaurant, that was really good. I really haven't seen that before in a movie, so that really uh, caught my eye, and I really enjoyed that. And man, the Joe Pesci scene. Joe Pesci scene was just so great. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the movie, please. My second favorite movie, Memento, is directed by Christopher Nolan. This movie is just, this movie is really breathtaking. From beginning to end, you're just caught and you're just sitting down. From beginning to end, you're just sitting and watching this and just trying to figure out how this all started for the guy. The movie is told unconventionally, meaning that the beginning of the movie is actually the end of the story and the end of the movie is actually the beginning of the story. And you notice know automatically in the beginning, because it shows how the movie's been playing in reverse through this reverse cutscene, edited very well. well. The whole movie's edited very well, actually. There's one scene that cuts off, then the next scene starts where the previous scene ended and it continues on, and that's how the movie starts. And the twist at the end is just so great. I just, I like movies with twists. If you have a good twist in the movie, I pretty much love it. The directing was well. The acting was great. I really believe that this guy had a short-term memory loss which hasn't really been explored on media before. And I just really enjoyed it. Christopher Nolan's one of the greatest directors of all time, in my opinion. Last but not least, my favorite movie. I'm kind of cheating because I have two movies instead of one, but once I tell you both of them, you'll understand. It's The Godfather and Godfather Part Two. Now, some days I really enjoyed The Godfather, other days I really enjoyed Godfather Part Two more. But what I really enjoyed about this movie and why it's number one on my list 
It's because of the story, the direction of it. You're with Michael Corleone, who's a teenager when the movie begins, and it shows his development and how initially he's not supposed to be a part of this mafia thing that his family is a part of. But at the end, he becomes the bad guy and just has to join it because everybody else is, isn't capable of doing the job. And that's why I really enjoyed it. It's about character development. So a lot of movies nowadays do not have character development, at least not this well. And it's a trilogy. There's three of them, but only pick two because those two are my favorite. I just like the story from beginning to end about the character development. The acting was great. Marlon Brando's in it. James Caan. Al Pacino. This is an all-star cast. I think this was probably one of the first few times that there was an all-star cast in the movies. I just really enjoyed the characters. The dialogue was great. It felt natural. It felt like you was watching a real-life mafia family. There are some inner conflicts going on, but, that, but the inner conflicts are really just pushed by the external conflicts of everybody trying to kill the Don. In order to beat a guy anytime, you have to kill the Don. And so guys, I've been thinking lately. I think I'm going to do a top 10 movie list about every other week. Maybe the weeks I'm not really reviewing a movie, I'll probably just post something. Um, tell me what you think. Please subscribe, share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Try to get my subscribers up and viewers. Just help me out. I have a link to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the bottom of this video in the captions area, maybe on screen too. And, uh, just subscribe, follow me, give me ideas, comment below. Just help me out. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.